So Mark, thank you for joining me today. Thanks, Andy. I appreciate being here. So let me ask you the first question. So in my new book, you know, I focus on strategies sellers can use to amp up their sales, which is really another way of saying sales acceleration. So in your mind, what is sales acceleration? Because it's a term that's used so frequently, and, and how do you define it? Yeah, I really define it as using data and technology and inbound selling to uh, to speed up the sales process and increase sales productivity. You know, that's really the, the phrase that I use. Right. I think um, the, the term sales enablement has been around for probably a little bit longer, and that's what I think it's closely associated with it. And, you know, under the covers, it really represents a focus on the salesperson for the first time in sort of the ecosystem of of sales methodology development and sales technology development mm -hmm. who, you know, over the over the decades i think have largely been left out of the equation so i, I think that's what this space represents so it's interesting so why why do you think they were left out of the equation i mean think about it especially from the technology standpoint um much of sales software has been focused around the development of like CRM. And I don't think many people in the last few decades would say that a CRM was built for the salesperson. Right. right? I mean, I think if you went and, and talked to a sales team and said, oh, you know, you're about to, you don't see a lot of them say, "We're yes, we're getting a CRM. <laughs> we're so because, excited. <laughs> yeah, usually it's like that means micromanagement. It means um, admin work. It means slowing down. And so, you know, I, th I think that's really where a lot of a lot of innovation from, from the technology side has been in the last few decades. And and, uh, you know, the sales person's level. And I, I think in a few years and I, I really, I, you know, I think in the next few years to come, um, we're seeing a lot more technical innovation on just helping salespeople sell faster and sell better. Right. So from an individual salesperson's point of view, I mean, what are the first steps? So you're a motivated rep, but you're just not hitting at your you know, inconsistent in your results. I mean, taking the technology and the tools and the skills and combination, I mean, what are the first steps they should take to try to accelerate their sales or to amp up their sales? Sure. Well, I think, I think there's sort of like a, a, a basic answer to that was to just like, you know, um, uh, you know, skill, sales skill development and, and listening to customers and all that kind of stuff. And that's been discussed for a long, long time. Sure. Let me, let me kind of frame that question as let's say that you're actually, you've got all that down. You've got the basics of sales down and you're just trying to capitalize on the latest and greatest, greatest of trends. You know, it really is leaning into technology and what you want to do as a salesperson is just think through in minute detail what you do as you pursue an account, right? Like you, you have to find who you're going to target. You go online, you source deals, you maybe use a data source, whatever it is. You type them in CRM, you start emailing them and leaving voicemails, you log that information, when you connect with them, you take notes and you add that as well. When you follow up with them with collateral, you send that out and note those items as well. And and try to break that down and picture how you could just skip all that admin work, how you right. can make all those tasks go a lot faster right? and how you can get more insight and make the experience better for your customers. And there are 50 plus tools now out there to help you with that. So I think that's the thing is start with your process today, kind of document that, and then just start educating yourself on the tools that are out there and start prioritizing and just trying a bunch of them out. Many of them are just free. You can just download them and experiment with it. Sure. So just start with that experimentation and, and you can really, you know, take a lot of those steps out of your personal process. So there's still part of the element of selling, though, which has to do with how a salesperson actually conveys this, you know, the information about the product and the solution they're trying to convey to their customers. So how does that fit into this in terms of the tools? Because tools only address a part of that. Sure, sure. Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, honestly, I don't think that story has changed over the decades. I think the message there has always been great selling is not about just telling a convincing story about your product. Mm -hmm. You know, great selling, in my mind, is about um, really developing trust pretty quickly with someone does, that doesn't know you. And there's a variety of ways to do that from, you know, sharing your background, your expertise, asking great questions, sharing stories about similar people and commonality, whatever. And then number two, leveraging that trust to ask great questions to that prospect to understand what their priorities are. What's mm -hmm. their biggest night? What's the biggest problem they're trying to solve? What's their goal for the next quarter or the next year? Right. Really get in and, and understand their context. And then number three, tell if you can help them, 
tell the story in a way that resonates with them, right? Don't tell the same story every time. Use their terminology, use their problem situation, and and explain to them how you specifically can help them. Yeah. You know, that's really the, the this basic, you know, bare bones framework that I like to use. I don't think that's any different than 30 years ago. And yet, um, I think people who have sales as a component to their job appreciate that. And even professional salespeople, I think, naturally want to gravitate just to the show up and throw up uh, <laughs> a approach to, uh, to selling. I love that it expression. Really is that, yeah, it really is that, you know, taking the, taking this, especially in this day and age when there's so much information online and so much context that you can understand and, and, you know, blogging, so much context that you can understand about this person and this company before you even engage with them. Absolutely. Modern sales people really need to appreciate that. So back to the individual for a second. So are salespeople born or are they made? Is there I mean, their innate skills? So when you're looking to hire people that are going to operate in the environment you have, you know, what are the qualities that you look for in somebody? Sure. It's a little bit of both, in my opinion. Um, I, I, I probably lean a little bit more toward salespeople can be made. Um, I, I certainly, some people are born with certain attributes that give them enormous advantages, but I think anyone can learn to sell to some level of degree. Mm -hmm. and it just takes proper coaching. Right. For us, um, you know, an answer of like, what do I look for and what do we look for? First off, I'll put a big asterisk that um, I get that question a lot, and I think it highly depends on context. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I can think back to some folks who were hired in the early days of HubSpot who were absolute rock stars in the environments they came from. Right. And I was so, I recruited them heavily, and I got them on board, and I was psyched. I thought they would kind of rewrite the playbook and rewrite the product for their team, and they didn't. Some of them didn't. And as I reflected, I was like, you know what? They came from environments of big companies with well-known brand Brands. and very transactional products. And it couldn't have been the opposite of the sales context that we had at HubSpot. Right. They just had to show up and they're going to be leads in the door and they just had to show up and they're going to get business. Yeah. And it's just like they, they had strengths and sort of high activity and a little bit of arm trusting and just like being very convincing. And that was the perfect salesperson for that context. But it was the opposite context at HubSpot and the other Days and you can the titles person that would succeed for us would be far different. So my big sort of asterisk on your question is the right answer to your question really depends on that context. Okay. And as a sales leader or a hiring manager, you have to first appreciate how your context is unique and different, and then establish theories as to what type of salesperson is going to succeed. Right. So for us, you know, I I went through that process. I documented my theories. I clearly define what, what intelligence was, what prior success was, what convincing was. I, I established a score ranking system of what a score of a 1 and 3, a 5, a 10 would be. And I was disciplined about scoring all the candidates and all of our hires against that. And as we hired 5 people, 15 people, 50 people, um, it was really interesting to reflect on those results. And eventually, like I hate to use it, but run a regression analysis, <laughs> which is what we did after a year or two of to kind of, you know, calibrate our unique score. And, right. you know, when, when you're looking at a, a year coming up and you have to hire 40 reps, it's very comforting to know that now that you've gone through that exercise. And, and if you, if you want to go that fast, you have some stats behind you mm -hmm. uh, to at least guide you in that decision. So for us in our context, which I think is very similar to any sort of tech startup or, you know, company, the five characteristics that really uh, statistically uh, correlated strongly were coachability, convincing, prior success, intelligence, and work ethic. Those and, are the five that, that cor correlated most strongly. All right. So the one that's, that seems sort of the most uh, obscure there in that group is convincing. So what, what, what do you mean by convincing? Oh, I'm sorry. It was, did I say convincing? It was curiosity. Curiosity. Okay. Coachability, curiosity. I'm sorry if I misstated. So yeah, no curiosity problem. is the one, not convincing. Yeah, yeah I agree. I mean, I think that, and I talk about this when, when I write, is you know, I really hate it when working with clients and companies and they're putting a job description together for a salesperson and it starts with hunter, closer, aggressive, and it doesn't talk about curiosity, problem solving, analytical, any of the things that really would say, hey, they can ask the right questions to the customer to help the customer sort of really come to a better understanding what the problem is and what the solution should be. Yeah, and I hate to admit it, but 
in my first series, I did have those <laughs> those characteristics in there. I had closing ability. I had convincing. I had aggressiveness. Right. And and like a year and a half later, when my MIT buddy ran the regression analysis for me, those attributes had negative correlations. Right. And that was it. Yeah, that was at least for our context. I think there are contexts out there that are, if you're selling a commoditized product, like probably the yellow pages, if you're selling yellow pages ads, those attributes probably are the winners. Potentially. Yeah. Potentially. You know, it depends on your context. But for us, selling, uh, evangelizing a new concept to a relatively intelligent buyer that needed to have a high degree of education, those attributes had negative correlation. Right. For us. 